Are you tired of losing games to Overwatch? Overwatch is in a better state than ever, and the game is actually really fun to play. But all that being said, losing still feels awful. This is the nature of a 6v6 competitive game, where sometimes you feel like your individual impact isn't enough to carry your team and push through the win, and losses feel out of your control. That being said, there's actually some things that you might be inadvertently doing, really small, minuscule things, but it's actually preventing you from getting more wins. So in this video, I'm going to be breaking down the top 7 tips to instantly win more games. That's right, you heard instantly, so let's not waste a single second and jump right into it, shall we? The number one tip to win more games instantly is to start dying less. Now I know what you're saying, dying less, okay sure, yeah I'm just gonna die less, it's that easy. Well here's the thing that you need to start thinking about each and every time you enter a game of Overwatch. Now firstly, you need to understand the game of Overwatch is a balancing act, a teeter-totter, a push and pull. Between your team and the enemy, it's a constant exchange of resources, from abilities to health, shield health, and even kills themselves. The team that manages their resources better overall is the team that will assuredly get the victory time and time again. Now the reason that this concept is so important for you to grasp is your life is the most valuable resource on the table. If you casually throw your life away trying to seek impact too aggressively, you might be punished and you might become a liability for your team. That resource teeter-totter will greatly skew into the balance of the enemy. While teammates all around you will balance their ability, resource, ultimate, and their actual life resources differently than you, you do not want to be the one that's dying over and over again, getting punished, and becoming lifted from the teeter-totter that is trying to leverage the advantage towards your team. A good rule of thumb if you're getting shut down multiple lives in a row try to be as threatening as possible but don't allow your life to become too much at risk you really need to balance this immensely and it's so important i've given tons of vod reviews specifically at the lower ranks from bronze all the way to diamond of players just like you complaining about your team complaining about this complaining about that but when i look at their vods i see that many times they're putting themselves in risky situations they're not valuing their own life the most valuable resource on the table this is so important for you to grasp so really get this concept down, value your own life, and you will win more games. Now moving on to tip number two, you need to start using all your abilities with intent. Now let me really define what I mean by using your abilities with intent because it might not be so obvious right off the bat. What I specifically mean here is you need to start using your abilities with a purpose every single time and you need to evaluate if that's a purpose that's worth the actual resource. We talked about earlier how each and every ability is part of that resource teeter-totter just like your life is, just like your ultimates are, your health and everything like that. With abilities in particular, I see this a lot from many players all over the place they will use their abilities for either no reason or very loose reasons and then they won't have them for when they need them. Let's say an Ana that takes 10 damage and self nades. Now for the duration of her cooldown, she can't make any plays with nade, she can't protect herself if she gets dove, she can't aggressively duel an enemy, there's so many lines of play that she completely blocks off for herself simply because she used nade only for that 10 HP. That's a really low impact reason to use her ability, but more importantly than that, it blocks off all the potential playmaking avenues for that ability for the preceding cooldown, which could last even a whole team fight. I can't tell you how many times I've seen an Ana use Sleep Dart across the map, only to get dove by a Doomfist that she's helpless against. She cries to her McCree, pleading for Peel. Can you please peel for me? Swap, please pocket me. I'm getting farmed. But it's her fault. She wasted the Sleep Dart. She could have had a hand in her own fate, but she would rather look at everyone around her, assign blame instead of looking at herself and saying, maybe using that Sleep Dart to try to hit that target across the map wasn't even a good enough reason even if i would have hit it there's no guarantee i could have gotten that kill it's really low value low impact and there's a potential for me getting dove and i won't even have this powerful ability that could stop the doom fist by myself so this is the perfect example of what i'm talking about with using abilities with intent every single time you use an ability think about the consequences think about what the enemy is going to do to capitalize think about if that ability use is actually going to get any value at all these are all things that need to come to your mind and if you really start using each and every ability with intent, I promise you, you will win more games. 
Now moving on with number three on our list, this is another one to really help you with teammates that don't want to synergize. You should start combining abilities and ultimates even by force. Now let me really explain this for you. Maybe you have a Zarya and your Hanzo, you want to grab Dragon. Maybe the Zarya is not in comms, or she doesn't grab when you tell her to. Maybe you're a Genji and you never get Nano for your Nano Blade. Maybe you're this, maybe you're that, and people just all across the board don't want to combo with you, don't want to synergize with you, no matter what you try to do or what you say in comps. While this is something that might happen, what you need to start trying to do is force to combo with you even if they are not trying to. What I mean here is think about your teammates as if they're going to be a repetitive completion of actions. If it makes you feel better, think of them like they're bots. So a robot will perform a certain action over and over again. Again. we've all played with ai in co-op games or story-based games now just because they don't necessarily think about what you're trying to do doesn't mean you can't think about what they're doing and still try to synergize with them if the arisa is just pulling her pull just because she wants to partially get more damage in you could be waiting for that as roadhog if the genji wants to just blade regularly without any sort of support you can go in with him as mercy damage boosting him or just nano him as ana and save your nano until he's ready to go in there are tons of scenarios where you can combine abilities and ultimates with other players who never had the intent to combo with you in the first place but you do it anyway because you're the one thinking critically about your teammates they don't have to they're the quote unquote bots that we talked about before but you yourself can be thinking about what they're trying to do you could be trying to use them as a resource in themselves whether they're the hard carry player that's going to carry you to their victory or they really bring menial value no matter what they do if you simply look at your teammates and their impact level as a way to achieve victory achieve your goals and find impact that could be a way that you start winning more games even without any teammate trying to synergize with you or help you in almost any capacity now, I know in this video, I talk a lot about winning instantly, but if you want to become a better player for the long haul, GameLeap.com has everything you need to develop your fundamentals. We got tips, tricks, VOD reviews, in-depth grandmaster guides, everything that you need to make you that self-actualized GM player. So definitely come check it out. You won't regret it. Now, moving on to tip number four, you need to start helping others. Now, this goes back to the combining ultimates and abilities, but it's even more than that. Helping others is some specific concept that everyone needs to start taking into their games, even when people aren't helping them many coaches have been cited to say this but the easiest way to get to masters is simply find someone else figure out what they're trying to do and start helping them whether it's the mccree trying to kill the fara you could easily complain to the mccree why can't you kill this fara why can't you do this but instead who cares about what he can or can't do maybe he can't aim very well Maybe he can aim exceptionally well, but he's getting pressured out. There are tons of different factors involved when evaluating a player, but what you need to think about is what is he trying to do? He's probably trying to pressure the far, but something is holding him back. Maybe he's getting spammed out. Maybe the far is getting pocketed too hard. Maybe there's a diva flying in his face. Try to help him out whenever you can, and you can help him accomplish the goal that you both want accomplished. This is true for everything across the board, whether it's a Ryan going in, a Genji on the flank, a McCree trying to kill the far like we talked about before or maybe a support just trying to not be harassed by the doomfist if you put yourself in the mind of others and think empathetically about what they're trying to do i promise you that you will accomplish more just going along with them than you'll ever accomplish just trying to do your own solo plays and the best part about this strategy is they don't even have to be trying to help you all you have to do is be looking at the battlefield and thinking about which of my teammates are doing something that I specifically can help and then go and help them and they will think, oh, I'm carrying, I'm a McCree, I can kill this far because I'm getting 500 heals for my Ana. He's not gonna think about you in that process, but in reality, if you never healed him or supported him, he probably would have lost the far duel over and over again. That makes you the difference maker and this simple tip can allow you to start winning more SR instantly. Now, moving on to tip number five, stop perpetually staggering. Now, this is a really easy one, but it's one that I really have to point out. People just stagger all the time. Even you yourself probably stagger. The problem with staggering in general is three people will push up away from their team. They'll die. And the three people that came out of spawn later will show up too late and they will push in slightly and they will die. And it becomes a perpetual thing. What you need to do is you need to put yourself in a safe positioning, understand the threats of the enemy, don't allow yourself to get staggered, and then if your teammates are slightly pushing in, you need to create enough pressure so that they don't get punished as well. I know you can't always stop your teammates from staggering, but at the very least, you can help them not get punished, but 
would remember what we talked about throughout this video your life is still your most important resource so if you're the one that's getting staggered even if you think it's your teammates fault even if you were trying to help them it's still your responsibility to make sure that you are the one not staggered you are the one that's keeping alive and treat your life with that valuable resource we talked about earlier now moving on to tip number six you need to start understanding your strengths and weaknesses and be realistic with it a lot of times i see players that grossly underestimate or overestimate a lot of the different skills they think i'm a really smart gamer but my mechanics are really poor they say oh my mechanics are top tier but my game sense and positioning is really bad the problem is they don't understand their strengths and weaknesses because it's a mixture of delusion ego and the lack of getting critical vod reviews from someone else the best thing that you could do is get an outside source of VOD review don't tell them anything about your strengths and weaknesses or don't overhype them and see what they say ask them what do you think my strengths and weaknesses are what do you think i can work on the problem is if you already established that you have a certain amount of strengths and weaknesses you might be overestimating your skill level your mechanic level or underestimating the people at your rank try to evaluate your strengths and weaknesses and that can allow you to take every single game in a realistic fashion to make sure that you guarantee impact maybe if you're realistic with yourself maybe you know okay I don't win the 1v1 with their enemy McCree every single time as Tracer. Maybe I shouldn't be seeking that. I could just play with my team, d a Diva, build up Pulse Bomb, stick the ride, find value on the front line without going and hunting down the McCree. This is being realistic with your skill level and not overvaluing yourself to the point where you actually feed and die. There are many different ways and play styles you can play in every single game. You don't always have to play it in one single way. You don't always have to be that Tracer that goes in and one clips the McCree. There are other ways to get the win and evaluating your strengths and weaknesses is the first step to start doing that now moving on to the last tip to start winning more games is look towards increasing impact and improving and the wins will follow suit you really want to start improving yourself as a player after you develop these strengths and weaknesses improve your mechanics your game sense your positioning watch more game leap guides practice your positioning watch vod reviews and map guides improve your mechanics and try free for all or just grinding your mechanics specifically in comp do all these things improve yourself as a player and i promise when you become a better player with enough games played you you will start winning the wins will follow suit something that can hold you back from the win is being so thirsty for that sr that you actually start losing instead the anxiety the frustration all these things start leaking out because you just want that win so badly but maybe you haven't earned it yet or even if you have all these things are cluttering your mind holding you back so if you want to start actually winning more stop caring so much about winning every single game a grandmaster tier player can climb to grandmaster at any time I don't care if you're in bronze, silver, gold, diamond, elo hell, it doesn't matter. A higher caliber of player will always climb to the rank that he wants to as long as all these things are in place. You don't allow the anxiety and the mental depression to hit your mind and affect your gameplay and you improve yourself as a player, you will bring more to the table, you will climb more and win more games, and that's all I want for each and every Game Leap subscriber. Anyways, if you want to learn how to do this even better, if you want to get a vision in on VOD reviews, Grandmaster VOD reviews, getting their POV's perspective so you really know their decision making, definitely come check out GameLeap.com. We have all kinds of VOD reviews over every character on the roster to ensure that you get the best quality coaching. You don't even have to take my word for it. We offer a 10-day money-back guarantee, so come check us out risk-free in the links here. Anyways, that's all i have for you today any questions please leave them in the comments down below also if you have any video suggestions or ideas i would love to start making them please let me know that's all i have for you today i'm coach mills and until next time 